On Tuesday, June 15th, 2021, the Foo Fighters took to the stage at the Canyon Club to a sold-out vaccinated crowd on California's reopening day. This means live music is back! Yeah! After a long road of hardships in the past year and a half, we are finally starting to see the return of live music with postponed tours solidifying dates and clubs starting to book local and regional acts. But after all this time off, we have some gnarly cobwebs that we need to shake loose. And when it comes to the heat of combat while playing live, being prepared is half the battle. That's why I came up with this list of 10 gigging musician essentials. Regardless if you're a pro or if you're about to make the first steps into the live scene, there's sure to be something helpful on this list for you. But before we go any further, smash that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any guitar gear nerdage and follow me on all my socials so you can stay up to date on new videos and announcements. Also, I'm gonna be mentioning some name brand products in this video, but as of this recording, none of these brands have sponsored me and I've bought all of these products on my own at full retail. Now with that all out of the way, let's get into it. Number one, a giggable gig bag. I cannot stress how much of a game changer a good quality gig bag is. Not only do they allow you to strap your guitar on your back, freeing up an extra hand for loading in, but they also have way more storage room and are often just as protective as a hard shell case under normal gigging conditions. But if you're a local or regional act, traveling in a car, van, or a bus, Semisoft is the way to go. I'm personally a huge fan of mono cases because they're built like a tank and have great storage potential for some of the other essentials that I'm about to recommend. And while they are a bit on the pricey side, these things have been proven to protect guitars after being chucked off of a two-story building so they are more than capable when it comes to protecting your beloved guitar. Shoutouts to Sir and Gator who also make some great quality rigid gig bags too. The gig bag that came with my Sir should honestly be the industry standard for all brands because it's nice and rigid, soft where it can afford to be soft and has a bunch of storage potential. Number two, high quality cables. I personally cannot understand why musicians are constantly cheaping out on cables. It's literally the thing connecting you to your sound and to your audience. And using cheap cables are just going to set you up for failure. An expensive cable isn't going to make you magically sound better, but it's going to help make sure that you don't sound terrible right off the bat or not going to be heard at all. Low quality cables tend to have thin and cheap copper cores, which can be prone to snapping if stressed too hard. And they tend to have super flimsy connections at the soldering joints, and all that just kind of adds up to way too many points of failure that I'd be comfortable with up on stage. Also, stop buying longer cables than you really need. I'll be doing a video on capacitance down the road, but realistically, think about the stage sizes that you're playing on and how much you're realistically moving around. Because chances are, your super long cable are robbing you of a ton of high end and attack, and you're not going anywhere near the long end of that cable. Personally, I go with Mogami Gold cables. They're kind of my gold standard. <laughs> when it comes to cabling, they're just really nice. They're thick, the connectors are nice and beefy, and I've owned this one in particular for about seven years and it has not crapped out on me once. Number three, a pedal tuner. I'm by no means a clip-on tuner hater, but please, for the love of God, stop using clip-on tuners at gigs. While clip-on tuners like the Infinite Snark are great and convenient for practicing at home or a casual jam, they hold the potential for absolute tuning devastation live. And that comes down to how they function. Clip-on tuners like the Snark use the vibrational resonance from the headstock to measure pitch, which works really well unless you're in a venue with a PA blasting frequencies into the air that can influence the resonance of your guitar. And don't even get me started on anyone using a phone app with active listening to tune at a gig. I've seen that happen more than a few times on pretty big stages out here in LA and it just hurts when you see it. So do yourself a favor and get a tuner pedal. They read your actual output signal as opposed to feeling a resonance, so they are by far more accurate regardless of your surrounding noise pollution. I'm personally a fan of the tried and true Boss TU3, but shout outs to Korg, TC Electronics, and Peterson who make some amazing stuff as well. And bonus tip, get your whole band on the same model of tuner if you can. Most tuners these days are very true to pitch, but knowing that everyone's on the exact same tuning standard is a nice extra layer of reassurance. Number four, a string winder. 
Unless all of your guitars have locking tuners, a string winder is critical for getting your strings changed in a hurry, especially if you bust one on stage and you don't have a backup guitar. I'm personally a fan of this Music Nomad Grip Winder because it has a large rubberized handle and the ability to grab a variety of tuning key sizes. It also has this handy wrench at the bottom that's the industry standard tuning nut size, so you can always make sure that your tuning keys are solidly secure. You can also find string winders that have a built-in string cutter, but I typically avoid these as they tend to be kind of weak at snapping thicker guitar strings and don't stand a chance against a bass string. If you're changing strings on stage or in a hurry, you can use the pinch and wiggle technique, which is where you grab the string and make a hard kink, then wiggle it around in a circle until it snaps. Shoutouts to Gethry Govan for that tip. <laughs> Number five, a comprehensive toolkit. This is an ultimate need on the road. Having variety of bits and drivers to maintain and fix your gear on the fly is absolutely critical. But you also don't want to be carrying around a giant tool chest with you everywhere. That's why I always turn to my iFixit Mako Precision Bit Kit. And no joke, I have this on me at all times. And that's not even a joke. Anytime I leave the house, this thing is usually coming with me because it has a large variety of bits that can tackle guitar setups, electronics, amps, pretty much anything that you typically run across in your signal chain with some sort of a bit that you need, this will probably fix it. It also has this really handy built-in parts organizer so you can keep track of all your screws during a fix. And I like this one in particular because not only can it tackle all of my music needs on a gig, but I can also pop this in my travel bag to service my camera, laptop, or phone. But I understand toolkits are personal, so whatever kit gets you the most comprehensive coverage for your needs and can easily be thrown into your gig bag is the way to go. Topo Chico break. Mm. Number six, a soldering iron. Every gigging musician must own and know how to operate a basic soldering iron. It can be a scary thing to get into, so don't jump into soldering if you aren't feeling confident after watching a handful of tutorials online. Reach out to your musician friends and see if they can show you the ropes, because seeing how simple soldering is in the flesh can be a real turning point in your quest for soldering supremacy. Now these are a must have on a gig because you never know when a solder joint will go bad or simply get busted. I've knocked a surprising amount of soldering joints clean off of pots while on stage, and I've even had joints knocked loose after driving on a bumpy road en route to a venue. Personally, I own this cheap little Weller unit. It's small, cheap, it has some pretty bright LEDs on the front, which can make peering into a control cavity a lot easier from the back of a dimly lit green room. Number seven, an amp stand. If you own a combo amp and you don't own an amp stand, what are you doing? Like, like, like really, what are you thinking? Getting your combo amp elevated and tilted up towards your ears is a must when using a combo amp. Without a stand, most combo amps are just firing at the back of your calf at best, so your hearing is super off axis from the sound source, which means not only is it going to sound way darker than it actually is, it's actually going to sound a lot quieter as well. This makes most combo amp players prone to cranking their amp's volume and treble more to compensate resulting in less headroom and harsher high end. And I suspect this is where a lot of hate for smaller watt combo amps come from. I've personally found in my years of gigging in Los Angeles that a Fender Deluxe Reverb is more than enough for any stage, having played one at venues like the Troubadour and the Roxy. But you have to be monitoring them properly, and an amp stand is the best way to make sure that you are hearing your true sound on stage. Number eight, a clip on light. These things have saved my butt on so many different gigs and usually for a different reason. I found myself on pro gigs that typically use sheet music to light my charts in a dimly lit pit or attach to my pedal board on a show where the stage was pitch black to allow these crazy trippy projections to be shown in the background behind us or attach to my beer bottle to light my makeshift dining table in a green room. <laughs> It's just always a good idea to have a light on hand, and having the added benefit to attach it to something is immensely helpful. So get creative and see how you can use a clip-on light to your advantage. Number nine, some way to record your set. I feel like this is a no-brainer that people often overlook. There's a reason why the world's most successful athletes watch their matches back on tape day. It's so they can see what they're doing right, and most importantly, what they're doing wrong. And the same applies to us. The best way to improve as a musician is to record yourself and critically listen back to your playing. We tend to get caught up in the moment, especially when the adrenaline and seven energy drinks are coursing through us on stage. So being able to listen and watch back 
the set with a clear mind is so powerful. And yes, heavily stress on the watch back. Remember, with live music, how you sound is really only half the battle. You also have to be putting on a good show. Being able to see yourself on stage, especially if you can see it from the audience perspective, is huge in figuring out if your stage presence is working or if something's being lost in translation. I have my Sony mirrorless camera rig that I use for YouTube, photography, and work on deck to film my sets, but you really, really, really do not need something this overboard for this tip. Having the added benefit of good quality footage and audio so you can possibly generate some content out of yourself is a nice bonus, but really the big thing with this tip is to watch back for yourself to grow. So having the best quality isn't really needed. I personally recommend using your phone and one of these Manfrotto Pixie tripods with the phone mount. It's cheap, small, and holds your phone. What more do you need? Well, maybe a beefier mic if you can spend a little bit, which I would recommend something like the Rode Video Mic Me, which can plug right into your phone and help you get some cleaner audio if you're clipping the built-in mic. But whatever route you go, just make sure that it's small, easy to use, and that you can hear yourself on stage. Another quick shout out to the infamous Joby tripod. These things are pretty okay. I personally don't like how much the legs can tend to just fall and wobble over, but if you do need to get a little bit creative with how you're mounting your phone or your camera on stage, these can be great because they can like wrap around a pole and get you some kind of crazy and unique angles. Number 10, a folding hand truck. Stop trying to be macho. It's okay to use tools to help make life easier. And these fold-up hand trucks sure make your life easier. <laughs> they fold up into a slim rectangle, making them super easy to transport. And they fold out to be pretty sizable, easily being able to cart any size cab you can throw at it, even a gnarly 8x10 base cab. If you're a combo amp and pedal board person, you can easily haul your amp and board on top of each other on the cart. And when combined with the gig bag that I recommended earlier, you can have all of your gear on you with everything you need and everything that I recommended to you all on your person and be able to easily move around. During my five year residence in Hollywood, I found myself walking to gigs more than driving to them because venues would often be just a couple of blocks away from my apartment and the hassle of finding parking would be a nightmare compared to simply walking to the gig. I personally like these Milwaukee fold up trucks. They're built really well and they're super durable and I've personally owned one for like five years and they're also pretty cheap at around 35 bucks. So if you accidentally bust one or misplace one at a gig, it won't be that big of a stretch to just replace one. Bonus round. Now I know I said this was a top 10 thing, but here's a little bonus for making it this far into the video. Bring an extra of everything, but not literally everything, just everything really important within reason, like extra cables, extra picks, extra guitar strings, an extra strap, an extra guitar? I'd find all those to be pretty reasonable extras to have on hand, especially the extra guitar. String breaks happen, and having an extra guitar can be the difference between the show stopping and the good vibes rolling on. So if you have a backup, bring it. And with that, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. Did you find any of these essentials useful? If you did, feel free to smash that like and subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos, and let me know down in the comments of any essentials that you have for your gigs. And until next time, cheers. Ba ba. Oh, I gotta get the, gotta get that product placement. Mm. Mm. Oh, the crisp taste of Topo Chico in the morning. <laughs> <laughs>